Up next on Beyond the Clef, I have Josh Germeyer and Hannah Morrison, and they are from Lamar Middle School. And they're going, to, if you are struggling with recruitment or retention or need some ideas, uh, these guys are the people to talk to about that. We're going to talk about that today. Even if you're band, choir, or orchestra, it's going to be a great uh, conversation. We're going to be talking about that, talking about our programs, and then talk a little bit about some advice for those college students out there that are looking for jobs. Coming up next on Beyond the Clef. Beyond the Clef is presented by Director's Choice. So thank you so much for being on the program, and you guys are good friends of uh, our mutual friend, Alan Hanna. Absolutely. And you're teaching where he used to teach. That's right. So we have Josh Dermeyer and Hannah Morrison from Lamar Middle School uh, in Flower Mound, which That's is correct. Louisville ISD. It's you're Louisville ISD, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So thank you all so much for being on the program. It's a pleasure. Thanks here. for having us. And this is actually kind of a new thing for me. I, I haven't had um, two people on at the same time yet. Uh, so I feel like we're growing. This is yeah. really awesome. <laughs> it's important, I think, when... We're talking about a band program in the process to make sure that all the parties that are responsible for it can speak for themselves. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's and, never and, so one you're, person. You're the director of bands, okay? sure, and then you're the assistant director. <laughs> yes, yeah. I always, um, I always like to say, like, you know, I'm the head director. Or there's the assistant director. There's always that dynamic there. And so, like my assistant, sometimes he's the associate director, yes. and sometimes he's the assistant director. He's the associate director when he's like, we should be styling our march like this. He's the assistant director when I'm like, hey, we need a deposit. Go count the money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of in there. I lost the coffee jokes, but yes. um, you know, they don't want to insult too much. <laughs> so you all seem like a really great team and um, uh, the reason why I wanted to get you on the program is because I was talking to my mentor Alan Hanna and one of the things that he was saying was that uh, he was at y'all school and one of the hard things that he couldn't figure out how to do was to really get his beginner numbers up. He was getting numbers um, in you know anywhere from the 50s, 60s to the 90s uh, is every year for a sixth grade beginning class and then how many did you um, do you guys have from incoming from this year oh, go right ahead. at 100 yeah right at 100 okay right so yeah. so it's boosted up a lot and so so one thing he said is you guys are doing something really great so can y'all talk a little bit about what you do to get kids in the program it's it's a, a two-phase thing we have to think about it's not just recruiting I think it starts with retention um, you keep the kids you have uh, our current eighth grade class right now when they were beginners, uh, was one of the 60 kid recruiting classes. Um, and we tried to keep them uh, as strong and as together as possible. So our band program right now that's at about 220-ish total started with a year of, uh, it was a small incoming class of kids. It was actually the last class that Alan and I recruited together when they were in fifth grade. Um, so those kids might remember him a little bit when they were in elementary school. But I think it just starts with retention. You know, a lot of times when we talk about recruiting problems, it's also problems with kids not coming back. Right, right. We're sure. in, uh, Flower Mound is a really close-knit, conservative, family-oriented community. And everyone talks, everyone's together. They, yep. um, they hang out together, they go to church together. And I always find it know. very interesting in my program how these kids and parents who I've never met before, never seen, have an intimate working knowledge of my band program. Yes. Because they know, people talk. For better or for worse. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and that's part of the brand. You, If you go out and do something that somebody doesn't like, they're going to tell everybody too. And so you always have to be thinking about that brand. It's, I mean, it could, it could just be, you could have a hundred beginners in band and if there's one family that doesn't like it, that one family can set the image for the entire program. Right, right. So, as important as it is for us to keep kids around, it's also really important to understand that if a student does leave, we want to make sure they leave on good terms. Right. And we still talk to them, we still talk to their families and make sure everything's going okay and, and just stay positive with them. Now I have uh, kind of the problem and, and uh, whenever I was kind of into that re retention you know, side of things, it was always that quality versus quantity mentality. And for probably my um, third or fourth year at, at Heritage, I was really trying to bolster my numbers. And I was all about the numbers and getting as many kids as I could because that's a positive thing. That's not a bad thing. But what I started to find out was sometimes the kids that I was retaining, it was just for the sheer sake of getting a number 
on, on underneath my belt. It was, and, and, and it ended up that those kids were really trying to detract. They were, they were really taking away from my program. So can you talk about how do you make it, even though you're getting so many kids in the program, how do you still make it a quality experience for everybody? Yeah, and I think you've led really well. He's done a great job leading in how we set up the beginning class and creating a culture that's, from day one, we're learning very, um, everything musically based, yet it's so much fun. And so the kids, it seems like every kid in the class is enjoying their experience, whether or not they're gonna continue or not. So they're enjoying being in band. They love just coming down the hall and that's where they get to go and kind of have a little bit of an escape. And so then by the time we're getting to hey, am I going to stay in next year? A lot of these kids will stick around because they enjoy it and they have a lot of fun. And if they don't, they still have a good experience. They're just choosing to do something else. And, and we do, we have conversations with kids about if you're choosing to go somewhere else, what kind of is, what is your mindset and what is your thought? And then we'll talk with parents as well. And so it's not just a kid-based decision. And yeah, as you know, it's, we, you know, we want what's best for the kids. Sure, Whether it's with us or not. Okay, so yeah. a lot of times we'll have students that'll leave us and we'll talk amongst ourselves and go, I don't know if they have anything other than this. And in that case, we'll work really hard to keep them, but there's also a bunch of kids that leave and they already have a community and a family and it's okay, it's hard right. for us, but it's okay. And we have a real distinct advantage just professionally between the two of us, this motivation to get students into the Marcus High School Band. I sure. mean, um, there's been no greater motivator for me than to just go and see the change that these students go through when they're part of a program like that. And it's a great driver, it's a great motivator for me to, to keep working and keep pushing and go, maybe the middle school band experience isn't exactly what's right for these kids, but you're gonna have a hard time convincing me that the Marcus Band isn't perfect for just about every student that wants to be in it. Right, yeah. right. That makes it easy to do your job, I think. <laughs> it, You know, it makes it easy as a motivator for us. Right. It does come with, um, it comes with some community ideas about the a level of work and amount of work it takes to be part of something with such a high level of excellence and expectations. But it's, um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, if, sure. if someone, if someone's, only reason for for not being with us is that it, it, they're too good. Then I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you mentioned you know these kids and getting into the program um, and staying in the program. And sometimes I feel like there's those kids that you know what they're not really doing anything for the band. They're they're not really practicing. Their embouchure is awful, and they just won't get anything fixed. They won't get into the practice room. They won't um, come for tutorials. They won't listen to anything I say. But you know what? They need band more than the band needs them. Right. You know, we were talking before the show about um, uh, some of these kids. You know, and in, in my band program, it, it's I always kind of tell people. You know, I have um, kids that um, I had a kid that got flown to the Cowboys game on a private his dad's private company jet, sitting in the same room with um, uh, I have a, another family who um, is uh, from Syria. And uh, she's like, oh yeah, this is where my family's from. Points it out on a map and it's Aleppo. You know, and if you read the newspaper at all, that's pretty much a war zone. Yeah. And um, so you have this d diverse uh, group of people um, all coming together in such a great way. And so sometimes I feel like as educators, we just need to figure out a way to, to teach these kids sometimes as best we can um, in the situation that they're in. You know, We live so much day to day because we, you know, there's so many hours and so many kids that we work with something Alan and I used to talk about a lot was you know this kid is like you said nothing's working for him right now they're not contributing a lot but we are just the beginning of what should be a seven-year process for these kids they have a lot of time to turn it around right so it's you know I, we we don't want to give up on anybody. If, if they want to be with us and they want to keep trying, then sure. we're here for them. Sure. I always tell the uh, fifth grader parents when they come in um, in our first little meeting, my goal is not to make an eighth grade band kid. Um, my goal is not to make a, a, a great French horn player to serve me. My goal is to create a lifetime musician in this child that they could be a doctor or a lawyer or a stay-at-home dad and they can go out and be 65 years old and they can play clarinet. That is my goal. I want everybody to be able to love music like we do. Right. It doesn't have to be a profession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we talked about retention. Now talk to me about the recruiting part. When you're, when you're, how, how do you get those fifth graders in the program? 
Yeah, um, our fifth grade recruiting process in itself, we have a couple opportunities where kids come up to the school. Um, so just in a very practical standpoint, the kids, all the fifth graders travel up to the middle school and each department kind of presents their own 10 minute, this is what we do in class. And the idea is this is a preview of what you can expect in this class as a sixth grader. Um, so we've been able to develop this, a pretty fun little show for the kids that for one, our, our seventh and eighth graders really enjoy it. So it helps keep them involved in the band process and the fifth graders love it and we get to play a wide variety of movie music and the, and the things that these fifth graders are really going to enjoy um, and we get to we get about 10 minutes but we cram as much as we can into there and we, we show every instrument and we show current sixth graders getting to talk and discuss about this is what I'm experiencing um, so that's just one of the practical like, what, what time of year do you do that that happens in January okay um, it's been pushed a little bit earlier it, so isn't it always push earlier? So for <laughs> yes. some reason, whoever's doing these schedules, eventually I feel like it's like presidential elections now. Like yeah. they're going to be doing their <laughs> their eighth grade choice sheets when they're sixth graders. They keep on pushing it earlier on us. And, and mine hits, um, our choice sheets are on March 4th and my contest is on March 7th. Yeah. So it's not really a good time <laughs> for me, but okay, we'll do a recruiting thing. Yeah. So tell me about this 10 minutes because that's an important 10 minutes. If you only got that 10 minutes to show them what your classroom's like, what do you do? Um, we, I mean, we start from the beginning. We take every 10 minutes, so we start with a, a Disney movie intro we tried this year. Yeah, her and I don't really speak. We don't. Um, and we've been joking around recently that we've been tweaking it and compressing it and making it more and more and more efficient over the years that we feel like it's like a little mini marching show that's 10 minutes long we're putting on and it's exhausting and it's, you know, we could just kind of walk out of the room and it would still work itself. That's right. Great. Um, but we do, we've put together a packet of music that's, that's timed out. Um, you know, if we're going to play Star Wars for the kids, we're not going to hand out a full page of Star Wars and play. We're going to play 15 seconds of Star Wars, then turn the page, and we're going to play 15 seconds of Beauty and the Beast, and then turn the page and do something else. Just to try and match the focus level that we see from the incoming fifth graders when they come to our right, campus. Right, sure. So it's been important for us the past few years when this is happening to also keep an eye on the kids that are there we're performing for and start to see when they start looking at ceiling tiles or looking at the wall or looking at their friend and go, well, this didn't work. We need to make it better next year. But but like Ms. Morrison said here, it's, it's our number one goal when these kids come here not to try and be the coolest elective or the best elective, but campus-wide our plan is we just want to give these students an idea of what our class sounds like and what it looks like that's it and we're not going to go overboard we don't dress up we don't dance we don't do props we don't do any of that stuff it's just here's what we sound like here's the stuff we play here's what the instruments look like move on we had a few years ago uh, we had 12 minutes to present to our fifth graders and I think two years ago it was moved down to 10 minutes um, and that's in addition to in December we get to travel to their campus as a full suite of three music ensembles with orchestra choir and band and put on a winter holiday performance for it. And the the official word is it's not a recruiting tour, it's a spreading holiday cheer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And one thing I do um, is I'll just, every now and then, I'll just email the um, principal at one of the elementaries and just say, hey, we'd love to come out during your lunch, during your fifth grade lunch or whoever, and just play for the kids. It's not a recruiting, we just want an experience to go play for them and have exposure. And one of the best things that I ever kind of worked out for me is I got with the PTA president of one of the schools and they were like, hey, can you come out and do the national anthem for us? I was like, I would love to, let's go ahead and do that. And so um, about once every other month, I got a bus and I, I think it was like the meeting started at six o'clock. It's a two minute ride to that elementary. So I had all the kids there at 545. We ran on the bus and it was it was a, a select group that could play the national anthem well. You, you, have, to, you have to pick that right. Um, I don't want it to sound bad. Um, and every now and then I had to get my poor assistant and I'm like, well, you're playing tuba, here we go. <laughs> um, but then we would go over and then we would perform at six o'clock, it's at the very beginning. 6.05, we'd be out and we'd be back. It was a less than 30 minute event, but these fifth graders and these parents are seeing us just do this service in the community. And again, you're talking about that brand, you always just gotta be out there. Right, it's, the community support and involvement is huge. And again, I think like going to PTA or going to athletic events and playing is huge and it's awesome. But for us, what's been so successful is just having a positive student experience on our own campus because our community is so interwoven and tight-knit that 
um, they talk and they know and just making sure that when the, the bell rings and a new class of kids comes in, seeing a bunch of smiling faces, we know everything's going to be okay and it's going to go fine. Um, and it's not easy, you know, because we have a lot of work to do and we have a standard we all have to keep in our classroom. But to me, it's more important that it's that we end each 6th, 7th, and 8th grade year not with a set of curriculum and objectives they have to be able to reach, but that the kid leaves us when the school year's over happy with the year and, and, and positive about coming back. And, and that helps. I really think that's what's helped us turn around a little bit because I don't really know that, that we've done a lot significantly different from when it was just Alan and I. Um, but just having... I think a, what you're saying is they just like you better than they like Alan. Well, <laughs> most people do. So. Of course, Alan's a great friend of a show. Right. And he always helps me out, but um, it, I just got to make fun of him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, that was that was our relationship, too. Yeah. <laughs> he's, look, he was, uh, he's a luminary in the field of music education. And I know you had mentioned he comes out to you monthly, right? And works with your group, works with you, and does clinics. <clears throat> I got that every day with him. Yeah. And, and that was huge. And he, I, don't, I don't think we did anything wrong with recruiting and retention. But these things, as you know, they go in waves. And there's ups and there's downs and there's ups and there's downs. And while he was there with me and before me, there was ups and there was downs and there was ups and there was downs. Right. And when he left, he was in a down. And I think he blamed himself for that. But yeah. it, it, that had nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, so, sometimes people do that, you know. Yeah. Uh, especially, I, th- I feel like most music educators are pretty humble. Especially yes. the good ones. <laughs> so talk to me about the relationship that you have with your fifth graders. You have that one event but and, uh, and then the, the uh, holiday concert. Yeah. But w- what else are you doing with these guys? How else do they know you? Not much, to be honest. Yeah. Um, we have fairly strict rules campus by campus in our district as far as, as what we can do and what we can't do. Um, which is, again, why the student experience for the kids that we do get to see is so important. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that we necessarily really get to know the fifth graders as much as I would like to. But um, I'm also very, very interested in making sure that everyone that wants kids in sixth grade is on a level playing field and an even playing field on our campus. And no one feels left out or no one looks at us and says, I can't do what they do because they have multiple directors and we only have one. Uh, I'm not interested in kind of doing that stuff. But when we do see them, you know, we just try and tell them what we do and we make sure they talk to their friends that are in band. And something that's been really big for us the past year or two has been um, connecting through social media. You know, all of our campuses all kind of require some level of that nowadays. Um, And to be honest, I never took it super seriously. Um, We did, Ms. Morrison runs the Instagram account and I would put things on Twitter with a moderate level of interaction and it was suggested to me to do start of you know be the last person on earth to start a facebook page for our group and i fought it kicking and screaming but she gives me a hard time now because i'm always there posting things on it and i'm getting a level of interaction yes. and communication yes. with parents not just our own parents but community members that have kids that aren't in our program are interacting with us through facebook and twitter now that you know we've never had before And just the simple act of, you know, you like to put something on there and see all the likes tick up. But more importantly, I like to put something on there and see the shares tick up and see all of these family members in our community share it to the rest of the community. And just show them what we're doing just so they have an idea of what this is. Because we, you know, we have so many people where a fifth grader will want to be in band. And the parent will come up to us and say, I was in band 40 years ago and I didn't really like it, so I don't think it'll be for him. Right. You know, where they all started on alto clarinets. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's, you know, this is like, it's so, it's so different what we do now. And it's not just the time difference. Like right down the road, a band program could be completely different than what we do. So we just ask for a chance. You know, if, if your kid has any interest at all, come and give us a chance. And I'm willing to bet, because our retention numbers are so high, they're probably going to love it. When we're talking about social media, um, I'm always so afraid to do that, start a Facebook page, because I'm afraid about the negatives. If if somebody posts something that I don't want, I'm always going to have to monitor that to make sure that something out there, you know, it's not getting out there that I don't want. Um, You know, Amanda Drinkwater was one of the first... uh, 
uh, episodes that we did in this format. And uh, one of the things that I kind of learned from her was that she is so she was so particular about the brand that she put out and the image that she put out, and wanted to make sure that it was exactly positive and representative of the Marcus Band program. So tell me about, I, should I just get over my fears <laughs> and just do it? Yes and no. You know, my very first year working at Lamar and for the Marcus Band program, I remember going up to a marching rehearsal and Miss Drinkwater was up in the tower leading rehearsal. And I went up and was watching and was just blown away with the artistry and the efficiency of what was happening. And I was young and irresponsible and I took my phone out and opened up the camera and kind of put it to take a picture of the rehearsal and she just kind of leaned over to me and put her hand on my arm and said, no, we don't, we don't take pictures of rehearsal and we don't share them either. And I went, oh, okay, okay, I get it, I understand. And I totally get it now and I understand why, but right. yes, you should get over your fears, you know? I still, I'm not, um, I have a personal Facebook page that I almost never reference or get on and look at. Um, so I'm still figuring it out as far as doing it as a group for our band program. Um, I got on a few weeks ago and I, I saw this little side column on my computer for our band program's Facebook page that had all these parent comments and questions they had been sending in that I was not getting notifications <laughs> for. Like they were asking what time they had to be at school or when concerts were starting and what they had to wear and I didn't know this even existed. Oh no. So I think you should do it. but hopefully a little better than I can, you know, and, and we curate the experience a little bit. Um, when we have a social event, we'll put up pictures on social media that's a wide view of all the students, and then we'll send home a little Google album of photos to the families that are more of the close-up that show their kids in it. You know, we don't really put individual kids on there much for obvious reasons. Sure. But it's, again, I just like to see the people looking at it and interacting with it and and it's almost like a game getting to see all the little interactions and views on there. And you're with. right, it has been parents that have been yeah. the most involved on the Facebook page. Yep, absolutely. And those parents have little siblings, and so we get to know those kids too, and those kids are in the elementary schools. And when you get interactions with them, they talk to their, their little fifth grade friends. And so you're, without even knowing it, without consciously speaking to a fifth grader, these kids are chatting about what is happening in band in sixth grade. Yeah, so that's, we a, that's a bonus. We don't get to see the fifth graders as much as we like. And it's, you know, just an issue of our own schedule and our own timeline. And then an issue of, of regulations on our campus as far as what we can and can't do. Um, so we have to go around that and just think wider and think more community-based and less direct interaction with these elementary school kids. That's an interesting philosophy. I like that. So going back to your um, 10 minutes, I thought something that was really interesting that you said was that you get your sixth graders to talk. And so uh, w one of the programs that I was involved with a couple of years ago was uh, be part of the band or be part of the music with Scott Lang. And he has some great, fantastic videos. And when he was making those videos, he was saying that they studied a lot of what Disney does. And what Disney does is they have shows that are 14 minutes long because that's about the attention span and that's what their max videos are. And then they have, on all the commercials on Disney, they're all one year older than their target audience. Something I didn't realize, and it makes complete sense, that these kids look older uh, to the target audience member, in this case, fifth graders, but they're not so far old that it's a bunch of, you know, old people. I walk in and I say, hey, you should join band, and they're like, that guy's like 70. What are we talking about, you know? <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about why you chose sixth grade, maybe some of the things they say or do? Oh, and by the way, um, the music packet, uh, I'm gonna have to buy you, like, cups of coffee, and you're gonna have to send that to me, because that's awesome. It's under lock and key. Oh, no, no one gets it but us. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> that's funny. Well, we do, we try and, even when kids are talking, they're not talking for more than 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. So really what these sixth graders, and then this year we were able to use some um, kids from the second group as well, which was fun, because those kids still feel older, but not too older compared to the fifth graders. And so they'll say something as quick as, this is a flute and her name is this and she's going to play this. And, and it's quick and easy, but the kids direct their attention to that fifth, sixth, seventh grader that they can relate to, and then they go back to the music. And so it's quick and it's fast and, We'll have one kid mention something I've enjoyed beginning band so much this year and I can't wait for next year. And so j just quick and simple things that you're hearing from a sixth grader. And you can also, in a roundabout way, 
dispel some myths students might think yeah. about the program. So we'll have a group of students go up to a microphone just to introduce other music, but it'll be a bunch of females with low brass instruments, yep. you know, holding a tuba or a euphonium or a trombone. And I think it's just important. Or boys for, with flutes. Boys with flutes. That's always boys a problem. Flutes, clarinet, double reed, anything yep. like that where yep. they look down and they see mostly girls. It's important that we put in the front the opposite of that, just to let them know it doesn't matter at all. You can do whatever you want. You can play whatever you want when you do this. And we used to really, really dig in with who's going to talk and where are they from and what elementary school did they come from, what instrument did they play. I think it's more important just to have someone that can get up and, and speak honestly now. You know, I, we don't, I don't spend that time much anymore because I used to just tie myself in knots trying to overthink it. But you just find it, that you, and we all know those types of kids in our class that speak like they're, you know, 30 years old. It's like, well, that's probably, they're going to speak well in front of fifth graders also. So you can go up there and talk to the kids, and if it's honest and, and they're not reading from a script, then great. You know, we, we'll pull the fifth graders, and we'll say, we have an idea of things we want you to say, but if you have something you want to say, go for it. And it works out really well. I think, I think the kids that are coming and watching these programs, they can see honesty. You know, I think they hear quality in a program and they see honesty in the talking. You said that there were some pretty strict rules in your district yeah. uh, concerning, I guess I'll call it recruitment. Sure. Uh, can you talk a little bit about those? And I'm assuming that's because of the relationship between the programs. Can you talk about the relationship that you have with the other programs uh, concerning recruiting? Um, it's, it's a little cloudy as far as district-wide rules in Louisville ISD right now. Um, most of them have been created at the campus level. They're campus-based sets of rules that were required from us in the past. And I, you know, I think we're going towards more of a district acknowledgement of what needs to happen, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, um, I'm so fortunate and, and we're so lucky at, at our campus where all of our groups that need to recruit kids all have the exact same values it's and we all get together and we say we're just going to show them what we look like and what we sound like and what we offer and that's it and i have a hundred percent faith and trust in the other programs on our campus uh how many electives do we offer for a sixth grader coming in seven it, or eight it's seven or eight electives yeah. they get yeah. two choices and one of them has to be a fine arts and um their fine arts choices um currently or like for our current sixth graders were band choir orchestra art and theater so they had five fine arts they had to choose um, at least one of them and then there was a few other electives to tag on to that and something you know we complain a lot about a number of choices a number of electives I think more important than number of electives is the quality of electives that we're offering we need to make sure that I think it's very, very dangerous if you send a schedule card home with a family and a student, if they look at it and they see these electives that, you know, say study hall this or, you know, blow off class that, I think that kind of damages the perception of what we want to try and do because we need to operate on a different level than that. And when we're all in the same little square that they get to circle from, we're, we all become associated even if we want nothing to do with classes like that. And our campus specifically is doing a really lovely job of, of getting that right and making sure that there is an expectation for excellence from all of the classes that these kids can join. You know, you just don't want students to be able to look at something and see a perceived low effort class and then sign up for that as opposed to something else that we do. Um, it's not that we want, to, we want to make kids work hard or we don't think they should be working hard. We just feel like we have so much positivity to offer them. Well, let's shift gears here just a little bit as we uh, end the show. I'm always interested in group dynamics, and since I have the fortune of having both of you here at the same time, uh, I, I joked before the show, um, my assistant, I, I always call him my work wife because I spend more time with him than my actual wife. Uh, but, you know, we've become like roommates, and we're like yeah. brothers. Uh, and, and with that, there's positives and negatives, and, you know, we, ha we have those pet peeves. I'm like, you know, stop. It's, you know, with the wife, it's like stop leaving the toilet paper roll. Uh, empty with with um, uh, my assistant. It's like put the entire ream of paper in the copy machine. Don't leave it on the table. 
control, you know, stuff like that. There's got to be a dynamic or something here, that, some things that drive each other crazy. You know, <laughs> Alan used to call me his work wife also, <laughs> and that made me profoundly uncomfortable, so I never do that. <laughs> well, of her. course, yeah. <laughs> um, so, it's such a hard question to answer because we work so closely and our specific facility set up I don't know do you have multiple offices or are you all in one office I have on one campus? office yeah we have we sort it's sort of an office it's more of a closet that's really <laughs> it's long and it's narrow and it, there's no real way to have two desks to where when like if I need to stand up to go she needs to push closer to her desk a little bit oh, so no. I can move back and get up and walk out so you know we're we're doomed to have this close relationship whether we like it or not but it's from my perspective it's a relationship that's um, grown based on um, having the same ideals and the same goals um, for the kids yeah it's it's easy to work together when your goal is to create this family this band family so that's going to make things that are difficult at times easier to get through because you know the ultimate goal. Right. We want these kids to feel a part of the family. And, and she in particular is uh, perfect for our community just because she came from a super strong family with super strong values. And she came to us just speaking community and love and support and happiness and making everyone feel like the individual that they are. And that's how, you know, it's nothing is harder than getting it to the end of a 12 or 14 hour day and, and trying to work with just one kid. You know, it's hard sometimes just to think of that individual. Right. Um, but she's such a positive influence, not just on me, but on all of the students there. And we talked about this just a week or two ago. Um, I was working her band um, and... I had the 45 minute class and I worked with them and then I got off the podium and I messaged her and was like, this band is a true reflection of yourself. They're kind, they're caring, um, they love what they do. And I think that's the most important part is, is having staff members that you want to see be good role models for the students on the campus. And leaders that lead in that way too. It, it works. It works. <laughs> so what you're saying is when I go back and I'm going to have my... Uh, uh, assistance band is going to be a reflection of him so they're sarcastic and <laughs> yes. spicy as I call it <laughs> you, could, you could only imagine what Alan's bands used to act like oh man oh, yes. I, I cannot imagine I cannot imagine um, well uh, uh, let me ask you so how long have you been teaching this is my third year teaching okay so let me ask you this um, and, and if we can uh, do a complete pivot um, here can you give advice to college students right now that are trying to get out into the world, what are things that you could think about that you wish you knew going into it? You obviously are going it, you got into a really great program and you've, you, having, um, you know, gotten out of college and now you're here, you're going right, right at the fire. So what do, what do college kids need to uh, be thinking about? What did you wish you knew? Yeah, um, from just, just looking at job standpoint, I think it was big for me to open my eyes to different cities. That was that was a really big point. Just just getting yourself open to the idea of moving and transitioning and finding communities that are great to join. And that's gonna be a learning environment for yourself. Um, I think if I were to do it again, just trying to trying to spend every single day learning and not being so hard on yourself. I think that's that's a big thing for a first year, second, third year teacher. You can't spend every day beating yourself up. You gotta learn from that mistake and move on. Right. And and try and allow yourself not to be so frustrated that you're missing the point of connecting with a kid. Like that's that's so much fun. That's what we get to do. Yeah, well, that's so. good advice for. I've been teaching for ten years, and I still let. Yeah, I need to move on sometimes and so just progress. let it go. It's okay. Let's move on to the next right. thing and learn right. from it. Yeah, yeah, and I do that with my kids all the time. It's all about um, the failures. Um, like I, we celebrate failure all the time in class, and you know, and I have a good relationship with my kids, and I always kind of say, well. You sucked at that, so now what are we going to do to not suck at that? And they're like, all right, then we, you know, we move on from that. But it, we learn so much from our failures, and it's as teachers or students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and lastly, having mentors that you can call and talk to about a mistake, even, right. and just right. allow them to help encourage you. Or when you have questions left and right, who, who are you going to be able to reach out to that you formed a relationship with in college or high school or even past that? So I think that's a big point.
And I encourage my assistant, I say, hey man, you need a mentor that's not me. Because sometimes you need to talk about me. Sometimes you need to say, I don't like how this is going or whatever, and you have to disagree with me. And you need somebody else to be able to talk to about that and not feel like you have to go through me for your everything. Mm -hmm. um, they need somebody else in another relationship there. We're just so fortunate in our area. We're in just such a densely packed area of talent in community and students and teaching up in Louisville ISD and Flower Mound that um, world-class mentors are just a stone's throw away yep. you know, for both of us. And it's, it's a, a true blessing to be able to just walk down the road or pick up the phone and just have someone just right there that's ready to help us out and answer a question professionally or personally that we're struggling with or need help with. So finding, you know, finding that community that's willing to be part of your family is just so important. Right, right. It's humbling. Thank you so much for being on the program. This has been a fantastic uh, opportunity to get to talk to people and uh, that do what I do, you know what I mean? And, and we're just in different cities doing doing the same thing and trying to make kids better. So it's really it's really nice to uh, resonate, but also hear some great ideas. So thank you all so much for being on the program. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you, it was a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Beyond the Clef. For more great content, subscribe on our website at beyondthecleft.com and be sure to follow us on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Facebook.